Good afternoon everyone. Today we're working in the shop because uh, the weather's a little bit too brutal out there for me. Um, it's 30 some degrees with like 25, 30 mile an hour wind, something like that. There's no way I'm going to be able to do any cleanups in this stuff anyhow. So uh, what I have to do is uh, work on this uh, Skag uh, Tiger Cat again. I got to fix some things that are having, I'm having problems with. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is uh, so what I've got going on is this was replaced last year. Though what this is, all the safety switches run into this and shuts the motor off and everything. They're basically the brains of everything. And uh, when they replaced that last year, they never uh, put the tie strap back in there that's supposed to be there to hold it together from coming apart. So I'm going to have to clean that up, put some dielectric grease in there and seal that back all up. But uh, this blow fuse keeps blowing also. And uh, what's going on is every time I get off the motor, if I forget to park the brake, um, more shuts off and this thing starts running backwards and blows that fuse every single time And then when that fuse blows the battery doesn't charge so then I have to use jump box to get started So what I'm going to do is replace this fuse with this uh, Automatic uh, breaker reset it is uh, got a waterproof cover on it Which will be water resistant because you're not going to be 100% waterproof So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to extend these wires out And I'm just going to mount it right here on this screw right here and be done with it it's going to be a simple little project, but it's got to be done because I'm tired of replacing that fuse well, once every two weeks. So it just gets to be a pain in the butt and you don't realize it until the battery's dead. And I showed you this before, but this is what I use. I like this because it's a big tube and I just can use it for pretty much everything. Don't take a whole lot of dielectric grease, just a little bit. And then I just like to wipe the top off. Just plug it in. One thing about these, they hold in tight together. Never have to worry about that coming apart. Okay, so now I'm worried uh, a little short on the wire here and I don't really want to make it any shorter. So I'm just going to cut it up, tight up against this uh, fuse holder. And I'm not too concerned about it. These are only like a dollar, two dollars, something like that. So if I want to replace it, it's no big deal. So we're just going to cut it off and be done with it. And just strip the wires back. Need to go back a little farther than that. Now I did not have any yellow wire. This gauge I got smaller wire, so I'm just going to use red wire because it is positive, yeah, and this will be exposed. So you'll be able to see it is a yellow wire. Uh, maybe in the future I might undo this and put yellow in it, but probably not. I guess I should check to make sure the seat clears this. That does stick out there quite a ways. There's lots of room, but I think I'm going to cut this off. I think I'm going to cut these off because they're just a little bit longer than I want.
and these fingers do not like little parts. That's what I'm dealing with now, so. to be about this long but I'm gonna make it just a hair longer I don't know if this is going to focus in on this, but I'm going to try to see that little bit of shine right there at the top. That is a sealant that is inside of the heat shrink, and that's what I use, the better stuff. So this is the next thing we're going to be using, but I am going to be cutting this plastic coating off. And I'm going to be crimping them on here, soldering, soldering them on there, and putting heat shrink over them again. Because I don't want to have any problems with anything coming apart. When I'm going to solder that on there, crimp that on there, and bring this up. This will work out really, really well. These are Klein pliers that I use. I like these. Uh, I carry these with me all the time. This is not going anywhere. Ooh, that's a little warm. So now before I hook everything all up, I better make sure uh, to put this on. I guess it's on.
And my fingers and these small little nuts don't work all that well, but... I guess it would be easier for the nut driver on there. So before I put the tie strap on this and seal this all up, uh, let's start this up and see if we have 12 volts going through. Actually, it should be about uh, 14 volts, something like that. And there is, and I don't have to worry nothing about it. So, yeah, this is a cheap cover, but I just want to, pretty much want to keep the dust off of it. This stuff's always a pain about to get started. Now, I know these little uh, tie straps are a little bit long, but at a dollar ninety-nine for a hundred of them, they're cheap. So that's the end of this little project. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I just never got around to it because that fuse is always blowing because I'm always hopping off the seat, forgetting to park the brake, and the thing shuts off and it starts, uh, the engine actually starts spinning backwards, dieseling, I guess you call it. And uh, every time it does that, it blows that fuse. And then I don't notice it blew the fuse until I'm uh, shutting the motor off and uh, go to start it again and the battery's dead. And it's just annoying. Then I have to get jump back out. Uh, which I just ordered, which I'll be going over that in the next uh, future video here sometime. And because uh, usually I have to take the jumper cables with another mower, and that's just a pain in the butt. That's why I ordered a jump pack. But anyhow, so that's uh, my simple fix. So there's probably a better way or easier way, or it doesn't matter. This is the way I did it. And uh, that's going to be the end of this project. So I thank you for watching and subscribing. If you check out the links in the description box below, we greatly appreciate it. Everybody have a good evening, and we'll see you on the next one.